Have you ever thought of writing your own book? Being an author? Putting words on a page? Well, Nikolai Naylor is one person that thought about it and then saw it through. So today we talk about his book. But the reason he wrote the book is because he's been on a journey as an accountant in practice to grow his business so that he can step back and do other things. So we explore all of that as well. And we also talk about him being um, doing outsourcing in the Philippines with his business, Intelligent Outsourcing. It's, an inf- it's a great little show, this one. And we, we delve into some great questions and talk about what the writing process really is and what it's worth, all that heartache and all that hard work. So without any further ado, tune in and listen to Nicolai Naylor. I got the man of the moment, Nicolai Naylor. How the devil are you, sir? Fine, thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Ashley, on this podcast. So why, am, why am I calling you the man of the moment then? Come on. Because it's the book launch day. So we have a, a, my book, the the firm you want. So I've got a few little things in here. Awesome. Um, launching today. So how this exciting. Is how how exciting is that? Available now. Yeah. How exciting is that? It's very good. It's just glad. I'm glad it's now finally finished. Well, it's not, there'll be little added bits that we're adding in, but it's, it's all done. We've got photos added. We've got... Um, it's so much more engagement than the proof. So we've got great feedback from the proof. So yes, no, it's brilliant. I'm just yeah, pleased what... it's now, this is done and we can move to the next level or next stage. Cause I've got to do the audible yet, Ashley. So that's my next bit is doing the audible for the book. Oh, well done. That is really cool. That's really cool. Um, We've gone straight into the book, but nobody knows who you are. So give us a little, who, who are you, Nicola? I know it's my fault. I'm, I'm the one ans- asking yeah. the questions. I'm, I'm really excited for you because writing a book is pretty incredible. Hold your book up. Hold your book up so we can so see. It's got it. loads of bits in it. Look but... at that. Look at that. Two authors on one show. <laughs> and I've got to say, everyone, Ashley's helped me actually inspired me to do this only because he was pushing me to do it and helped me through um, us helping each other every week, just making sure we were getting work done. So thank you, Ash. No, no, no. Absolutely. So go on. You're going to tell us who Nicolai Le- Le- yeah, is. So... What does he do? Who am I? So I have an, I'm Nikolai Naylor. I have an accountancy practice, Naylor Accountancy Services. Um, we're based in Tunbridge Wells. Um, and we, we are sort of, there's 11 of us. We just do an acquisition in the 1st of October. So that's happening. That will basically double us again. <laughs> so we're good. And then we're going to be looking at acquisitions every day, every day, every year. Um, every day would be a nightmare. Um, and the reason for that is, We've got it working. It's all working really well. We have offshoring in the Philippines because they have another business called Intelligent Outsourcing. And there we have people working for Naylor Accountancy Services. We have eight there, including admin who speak to clients and everything. Um, But we also offer that for other accountancy practices. So initially I started that just for friends and now it's for everybody basically who's about accounting practices, as long as you are the right person and the right fit for the way we operate. Um, so that's how we're growing. Um, and yeah, and so, so that's me. And I've got a dog, which you might see behind me, and two kids and a wife. Fantastic, fantastic. And a chair full of books. I love that. Wow. I love that. Um, I thought I'd a pro place, Ashley. No, absolutely. Hashtag hamster. I don't know if you noticed. Oh, there's hamster. a hamster. That's the hamster. You're going to have to get the hamster because we want the hamster on the show. Um, Victoria Russell saying it's a great book. So she's obviously read the proof oh, yeah, copy. No. Uh, Thanks, LinkedIn, Victoria. LinkedIn user. We don't know who you are, so uh, thank you for saying congratulations in caps locks. And Paul Newton is saying good afternoon. Good afternoon to you too, Paul. Um, so it's the day of the book launch. Yes, and you know, we've both written books. And obviously, I I was w- working with you while you were writing your book. It's it's hard work, isn't it? What what kept you going? Why why did you finish it? Why did you publish it? Because so many people start and never finish. So what 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 was your motivation well that, that's interesting because if i start something i finish it so that that's the first thing okay that's good and so so i i just planned it and then but well, what's interesting it's become more than i thought it would be and i don't mean that to be big up the book but by actually planning it and then writing it is actually 
helped me as well to realize what I've done, my journey that I've done already. And there's more to my journey. I mean, that, my journey's only just started. And all I'm doing is playing. I've learned from people, books, everything that I've done to create what I've I've created. And it's and that's I've got leadership teams in there to help grow that and with the vision and everything. So yeah, it's it's inspired me to do more. But bizarrely, I would like I want to write more books now. Which is all your fault, Ashley. So I apologise for everyone else out there. It's so my the, f- fault. It's your fault. fault that I'm writing books. Fault. I actually enjoy it. Some people don't because I've been speaking to quite a lot of people who've written books. But I actually really enjoyed it. And I find it therapeutic. The only issue I had was finding time to do it because um, I wasn't really getting the time that I want. But but I will be looking to get more time going forward. Yeah, and I, I think I think that's the, that's the difficulty. Um, so. If you start something, you're going to finish it, and 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 there's a lot of people like that. Um, I, I, I if I turn around and say I'm going to do something, I jolly well do, will do it. Yes. I might pull my hair out, or scream and shout, or kick the cat. I don't have a cat, so mm. that's just a figure of speech. Um, but how did it feel when you opened up that new book? When you opened up when you because because the the book the book today. Yes. We. we it's already it's it's the same book that's been you know tidied up um yeah. made, made you know it, you've done an awful lot more to it yeah. but when you first opened the very first book when it first came to you your first proof copy what was no, that, that feeling? Yeah. First. yeah but what was the feeling true. like what was the feeling well, that like was amazing you? for me yeah. that was amazing there's there's like all words no nothing else in it it's literally just words because i thought a book was just words i think i didn't think it was anything else but then someone, lovely Lena, said, I'll, I'll bring this book over. And the hamster. And the hamster. hamster. Yeah. But um, with, with this book, so Lena said, well, get photos in there. Bring it to life more. Um, don't just have words. So so we've got photos in, you know, with our, our meetings. So that that actually brought, brought it more sort of to life. And hopefully... It will actually explain more. I mean, like that's just doing one of our annual planning meetings with the SWOT analysis on, on the wall. So it just brings it to life more. And then we've got quotes in here, just just you know, that like that's our leadership team in the Philippines, like when we have annual planning. So it's, it just brings it to a bit more life. And um, I've got to show you this, Ash. I think this is the one. Where are you? You are you were in a few times, I think, but that but you are there. With the yellow T-shirt on. With the yellow T-shirt. That's that account text. Account text. Really? But I've got really? a few pages just for fun at the end, just with, you know, hashtag. Pe- people, people, love, people love photos, well, don't they? Well, I didn't appreciate it as much. It was only Lena that actually brought it to me, you, you know. So thank you, Lena, for that. No, fantastic. So I think it's a more enjoyable book to read now as well. No, and a bit of fun, and and, and they can leave it on the coffee table. I I do I do love I I do love this. What Paul said: if you start something, you'll finish it. That puts you ahead of a lot of business owners. So <laughs> true, Paul. Paul. So so true, and 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 a lot of authors as well, or would be authors. I don't know what the stats are, but you know, loads of people want to write a book. Uh, loads of people start a book. So so less people start a book, less people finish a book, and less people actually publish it and get it out and actually have a physical book. That, that's and, an interesting one. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, and then we've got a book launch today. Um, yes. Sadly, sadly, I'm in Devon, but uh, no, where no, is no. it? Where is it? What you're doing? Tell us a little bit about your book. Well, we're in London. We have the Zero headquarters in London. Well, not headquarters, that's the Milton Keynes, but, but their office there. And the lovely Diane Holden's going to be there um, asking me a few questions, fire shop, fireside chat, and we've got some drinks in and just a few. It's a small little group because um, there's not that much space there. So it'll be really intimate and nice. I'm looking forward to it. Although I'm still nervous about all this, because it's all of a sudden coming to a sort of crescendo. But but well, look, you, you deserve to celebrate writing a book. All right. Now there's thanks. people watching, there's people listening on the podcast, and they're thinking about starting a book. Hmm. What's what should they be doing? The first thing I I would just say with anybody is just plan it. So I, just just plan the book so so think of the headings think of what you want me to write about first and then just think think of it so all i did is that christmas this year i just put a lot of title i put a lot of chapter headings that that i thought this is what i do this is like my journey this is what's made us able to grow and actually 
go and do acquisitions and just feed them in and make make it grow and work. Um, so I just did that basically, um, and then start writing. So I just started writing a chapter. Don't worry about it being perfect um, because you can rewrite it later, um, and 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 just and you have you can have people editing it for you as well. Um, so so it's it's just getting it done, getting it on paper. Okay. Well, keep going as well. Yeah, I think I think that's the thing. It's the motivation to keep going and and you know and and seeing the end. And I, and I think with when you're doing something, we see the pain that we've got right now. Um, like exercising, for example. I know I know you I know you you, you go to the gym. I do my sit ups every morning, and I'm there doing doing my sit ups and what have you. And I think, oh, I really couldn't be doing this. I really don't want to be doing this, et cetera, et cetera. But all I'm thinking about is when my grandson wants to go and play football down the park, yeah. I'll be able to chase him around the park with the ball. Yeah, yes. I won't be sat in a chair saying I'm too old, I can't move or anything like that. So it's so when you're sat there at six o'clock on a Sunday morning when you could be having a lie-in writing your book, you're sat there thinking, yeah, but on the 13th of September, I'm going to be having a book launch. Yeah, I, did, I didn't. I actually thought I'd do it earlier than this because I'm always, I'm always very optimistic. I thought it'd be July, but it took a little bit longer to get there. Um, but yeah, no, I think you yeah, just keep keep going. It's a habit, like Atomic Habits. You know, James Clear. You just have to keep those habits and then just do it and and diarize it. That, that's the main thing. Yeah, put it in your diary and, it, and it gets done. Okay, so. You've, you've written a book and the book is your story of how you've grown your business from a, a, li a little, you know, accountancy practice to something that's quite sizable, something that you're not in it day to day. Um, and there's a lot there's a lot of accountants that I, I work with, talk to that are just busy doing sets of accounts, tax returns, mm -hmm. talking to clients kicking staff or whatever else you do as a practice owner and and you don't seem to do that because you've you've systemized things and stuff like that so tell us a a few things that that we're going to learn from from reading the book and how can we become yeah. you know a, a business owner like yourself yeah. rather than working in the practice so i mean the, f the first thing is i always and that's why i start the book so i started with you so so first of all you so you need to look at yourself and see what because this is what happened to me i was not believing in other that other people could do things or you know trusting them to do things i thought i could do it so it's looking at you and where you are um and just seeing and i sort of go through that in here what you need to look at in yourself and what you need to do like let go it's delegates and everything i need in my mastermind group yesterday we we're having conversations with you know with someone who's finding it difficult to let go because of, well, his work is very difficult but he needs to trust other people to then learn and learn from it and be able to deal with things but when it's difficult to let go um so it's looking at that but then once you've got that you need to also be looking at the rhythm of your business i call it and that that's like the structure so and it's just doing things the same all the time so we have a weekly meeting um with the leadership team so first of all create a leadership team um and then also have a daily huddle. We have daily huddles. I'm not saying have a daily huddle, but a regular huddle with your team so everybody knows what they're doing. And then you have a quarterly you know, um, review meeting where you create projects. Uh, and then you have an annual review to create your vision, make sure you're happy with your vision and everything. So it's creating a roadmap to work on. If you don't have a vision and you don't have a roadmap, what you do is <laughs> difficult to get off the hamster wheel, which is where he comes in, Ooh, wrong way around. He comes in <laughs> because if you're on the hamster wheel, just going round and round, like like this little boy here, that man, sorry, uh, that he, um, then you're not able to think what you want to do strategically. I mean, like even writing the book, I wouldn't have had time to write the book before I'd got the structure, um, and I run a different business as well, and we've just introduced a four day week there, so that, and that wasn't a mean feat. So we've got lots happening. So I get involved with the strategy, but you do need to create the environment that allows you to do that. But that starts with you, then the structure, 
And then you've got everything that around after that as well, like your vision and everything like that and your structure of your business. Um, but the rhythm of the business, I think, is really important once you've sorted yourself out. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's incredible because we're all – you know, running our own business, and you know, I'm doing it here. I'm I'm never going to have a business of your size because of the, the because of what I do and and yeah. things like that. Um, but we're like, oh, hang on, I could get someone to do this, I could get someone to do that. But then you're relinquishing control. How how do you get over that hurdle? Because you know, if if, if I was an accountant, I've set up a practice. Yeah. I, I do I do my accounts in a specific way, and my clients love them, and I do the tax return, and yes. my clients love them. But that's fine when I've only got 15 clients. But if I've got 150 clients, there is no way I can do all of that work. So I've got to give it to somebody else. And so how do you divorce yourself from that and trust somebody else to do it? Because that's the difficult thing, isn't it, Nikolai? Yeah, I mean, the most difficult thing is creating the A team. So I have it in here. So I forgot about that. There's a whole chapter on team because having the right team is so key. So I have client managers and an operational manager in the Philippines who looks after the, the, the compliance out there and the team there. And that all works amazingly. Um, we have a leadership meeting, but, but the trust took a while to build up for me. I mean, I've got a story in the, in, in the book just about me at the start where I had actually Dee, who's, who's second commander of intelligent outsourcing. She came to Neural Council first doing bookkeeping and, and the secretariat stuff. And I wouldn't give her setting up a company or the company secretary, which is if you're an accountant and bookkeeper, you'll know what that means. So I used to do it myself. And then I gave her it after six months to a year of working for me. And she said, well, why didn't you give me it earlier? And and it made me realize I, I was holding on to things because I thought I was the only one that can do it. And most of us accountants and bookkeepers are the same because we've done training. We know what we're doing. We don't think other people can be as good as us. And I had that with the acquisition I took on, which was very painful. I was in a dark place then because it was awful. But that was because of people leaving as well, who I thought I was bringing on with me from, from the acquisition. But um, but if you don't trust other people, you're not going to grow those other people either. And you need to, I've got a whole a little chapter in here as well, um, a section in there on um, allowing people to make mistakes, because people make mistakes. But you have to learn, like Henry Ford said, the, you know, as long as you learn from mistakes, he just didn't say quite like this, but as long as you learn from mistakes, that's fine. The, the worst mistake is not the one that you don't learn from. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's the thing, right? If you, if, you, if you don't try anything, you're not going to make mistakes. Yes. Um, but you're not going to grow. Yeah. You're, you're not going to grow. Um, I just want to pull in Paul because he's saying about the book. Um, my book has brought me so many opportunities that it's ridiculous. It far outweighs the hassle and the grief I went through to write it. Absolutely, Paul. And 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 yeah. So oh, brilliant, I, Paul. I, I, well, no, it's exactly the same with this because yeah. it, it, it's a it's a it's a different it's a it's a different thing. Um, and Jude is just saying here, and and this is this is another thing because you said about a roadmap of vision and stuff like that and goals. If you don't have a goal and the right roadmap, it would be hard for someone to get out of the hamster wheel. Awesome takeaways, and I couldn't agree more. Thank you for reminding us. Thank you, Jude. Um, oh, thanks, Jude. Yeah, and that, the hamster. Come on, why, why hashtag hamster? Uh, when I promoted this this show, um, I, I, I don't know if you didn't say anything about it, but I've called you the hamster guy. Yes. Um, um, so, so come on, tell us about tell us about the hamster guy. Why, so, why, why are we calling you the hamster guy? So it's, in reality, it's not me that's the hamster guy. It's, it's my whole team behind me. So I'm not the hamster. Um, and, I, and a group of hamsters call a horde, by the way. I looked it up. So all right, OK. Like, start, learning, start learning all these hamster facts. That's hilarious. And somebody asked me yesterday, and I had no idea, so I had to Google it. But um, with hashtag ha so the whole point with hamster becomes, um, I used to speak to potential you know, people who were clients before they became clients of intelligent outsourcing. And they were saying repeatedly that I feel like a hamster in a wheel. So I'm just running around, not able to do anything. Um, <clears throat> and effectively what that meant was they couldn't do added value work with clients. They couldn't speak to clients as much. And that means you're not going to get EWU, so extra work orders. So, so give them extra, have a better relationship with them, get more referrals, grow the business, spend time with your family. 
um, you know, and actually just relax more because people ended up just doing the compliance work and then just, yeah, finish, finish, next one, next one. So what we say is let us, intelligent outsourcing, be your hamsters. So let us do your compliance, bookkeeping, your secretary, whatever it is you want, using your systems and processes, because it's offshoring, it's not outsourcing. So we say offshore is the most intelligent way to outsource because um, they become effectively one of your team. Um, so that's why the hamster, and that's why the hamster guy. So I am the hamster guy, but it's really, I've got a team of hamsters that work, you know, for us and everybody else. So we are all very busy. In that um, so, so, so you're outsourcing um, in, in, in the Philippines. Yes. That all be ca that, that came to happen because you couldn't find enough team members in the UK. Is that, that, is that right? Yeah. So we, we created, so it started with um, just, just, you know, for me, Naylor Accountancy Services. Um, so what we did, we struggling to get people because where I am is in Tunbridge Wells. People don't like leaving their jobs. If they're accountants, they tend to be very sticky. And then also we're very close to London. So people in London earn a lot more than they do in Tunbridge Wells. <laughs> So you're very, it's very difficult to find good accountants in this, this area. And we hear it all the time at the moment from all accountants that they can't find, they're struggling to find good accountants or even find anybody to interview because mm -hmm. people either go into industry because it does pay more than, than practice or they're just not moving, especially with the environment that we're in right now, that people don't really want to move um, so much. So that's why I started, and then I started it for friends and everything, and then and it grew from there. But yes, so we we had an issue actually recruiting. And so so you can't can't beat them, join them, set up your own. And so how many people have you got out in uh, the Philippines now? Then it's just over a hundred, um, I believe. It keeps sort of changing because we keep hiring. So yep, I'm, I'm not sure, but we've got like a great training program. We've learned so much because we started in 2016. Um, I actually started before then with Naylor, but that's officially. Um, so we've got learned so much over COVID. That was tough because that wasn't an easy time for anybody. Um, but we were blessed because we did. We know nobody was really impacted apart from one accountant. But what we were blessed about because they were in the Philippines, they became the breadwinners for most of their families in the whole family because all business shut down. Everybody yeah, was locked yeah, up in their yeah. buildings. So we felt that uh, privileged that we were able to help those people through and their families through through uh, COVID. Um, and then uh, through the back end of COVID is, you know, it's all back to normal now. No, absolutely fantastic. Um, okay, so you've also mentioned four day week. Yes. All right. So we, we, we hear it banded around. We hear yeah. people talking about it and stuff like that. And, you know, it sounds a great idea, but how was that implementing that? And what's the benefit to you, your clients, your team? Yeah. So the four, the four day week, we've sort of implemented an Andrew Barnes method. So he's the guy in New Zealand. He's a, he's a Brit, but in New has really been pushing it throughout the world. We've just, we've had to transform it slightly. Um, so it, it works for our partners basically um so what what it means is it's better well-being for our team we have we are piloting it for six months because productivity has to retain the same and level of service so and it should so they're working effectively 36 hours um in the philippines in four days before they were working 40 so we're gifting them four hours but the, the way it works is that the productivity is there and they, they operate, um, you know, the nine hour a day, basically. Um, and it's been difficult to implement because the contract's the same. <laughs> the legal, you've got to work out all the legals and it's not easy. And then you've got, you've got to get the partners on board. The benefit to the team members is well-being. They can do other things. Say Stephanie, my EA, she's saying, great, I can now, not only if she wants to spend more time with her son than me, he can, she can where she's wanting to do some studying that she'd always wanted to do as well in that day off. So she's going to be joining courses and things like that. Um, we've got people who are, hey, they, they come and work where we are and they go at the weekend back to see their family. So they now are able to 
have more time with their families at home. That, that's how they operate a lot in the Philippines. And then the benefit to the our partners, intelligent outsourcing, is that it's retention. So it's better retention because there's a massive demand for offshore accountants at the moment in the whole world, basically. India, you know, uh, Philippines, just everywhere, everywhere, because the whole world is, is sort of opened its eyes up that you can do offshoring outsourcing, um, which people were wary of prior to COVID. So it's retention and also so we can get better, you know, we can get really good candidates coming in as well. Um, so so it's, it's which will help help our partners grow their practices because people tend to or practice tend to get one person and then grow grow the practice or grow their team with their practice so that then their team in the uk can focus on um you know that added value speaking to clients and everything like that no, does fantastic. that make sense Ash? yeah no ab absolutely absolutely no i think it's an absolutely brilliant day and i'm gonna i'm, I'm idea and I'm, I'm trying to implement it in this business um <laughs> we're, we're currently working a four and a half day week but uh yeah, we yeah that's good. i thought so, you were because i'm trying to get hold of you on friday afternoon yeah there you go there you go um right okay we've nearly run out of time um you got your book launch in a minute so yes. good luck with that um, but next week you're going to be at Accountex North and yes. will you be giving your book away to anybody that comes to the stand? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, this book is available now on Amazon and we've got it at a, a lower price at the moment. It is in color. So the, the price is higher, um, unfortunately, because, because, because of the color, but we will be giving this away, um, for free at Accountex. Um, we will, we will be sort of asking for your details on it and having a conversation with you. So if you're in Accountex Manchester, pop along to stand G15 um, and, and we'll be able to give you give you this this there. Um, and if you've got any questions for me, just pop along to the stand as well and just ask me any questions you like, basically. No, fantastic. Or, or anything. And, and I'll be there as well, yes. uh, Nikolai, with you because uh, people can book 10 minutes with me and I will go through their LinkedIn profile and help them um, with that as well. So if, if, uh, if, if you don't want to see Nikolai and you want to see me, then come to Nikolai's stand anyway. Um, yes. so you can see me and you can get a copy of Nikolai's book. Um, and and I don't know if everyone knows, but Ashley is actually speaking at the Countess Manchester as well. So it's definitely worth going along to his speech. Well, definitely worth going along to a Countess because there's going to there's gonna be a, a lot of people there. Um, Kath, Catherine, uh, Karen uh, likes a four day week when working from home. So uh, no, absolutely perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, Nikolai, what question yes. haven't I asked you today? So, uh, well, the, what, one thing is, uh, I don't know, is the importance of team. So I've mentioned it, I have a whole thing, but if, if, if you don't have a good team and you don't actually, like the A team, it's very difficult to sort of step back if you've got an accountancy practice. If you don't want to, if you want to be doing the doing, some people doing compliance, that's great. But what I'd say is focus on the A team uh, and building that and it took me the time to get a really good uh, client managers in order to, for me to step back as much as I have basically without that it's, it's very difficult because people will always come to you so get that A team but my book should help you a little bit in that and just get the structure around there it's very practical it's not rocket science it's very easy to implement in my opinion but it's just consistency I love that. What a great way to end the show. Nikolai, thank you so much for coming on. I look forward to seeing thank you next you. week. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you to everybody for joining in. Thank you for your questions and your comments. And uh, we will be back again very soon. Cheerio now. Here we go. Another podcast in the bag. I've been Ashley Leeds. You've been wonderful. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to hear more, then please subscribe and I will see you again another day. You can find me on LinkedIn if you want to catch up. If you fancy being a guest on one of my shows, I do live shows on LinkedIn twice a week, but I also plan to do some real podcasts uh, where we just do audio and probably record it to go on the YouTube channel and we can talk about absolutely anything in there. So whatever you want to do, get in touch and thank you for listening.